Thank you, Sherry. 60s and 70s, the world was different. United States was different. India was different. And really, we didn't have any Indian dream, but we're going to pretend we did. We had our own version of the Indian dream. It went like this. My son, you can be anything you want as long as it is a doctor or an engineer. <laughs> so that's what happened. I'm on the left, I become an engineer, my brother becomes the doctor. <laughs> my voyage into engineering begins in a shipyard. Here, now I was fortunate, I was comfortable. I was exposed to a group of people who were much less educated, much less fortunate than me. And yet, in them, I saw human ingenuity expressed through engineering in a way I had never seen before. I came to relish engineering as a truly great profession. I wanted to be an outstanding engineer. I aspired to be a great engineer. I really did. I spent about one and a half decades on many ships, including these three. I traveled the world. I worked with all kinds of equipment. A ship is like a floating island. If you require it for life, we have to be able to fix it. <laughs> I moved to the United States as a graduate student. Went to Maine Maritime Academy for a management course. I did quite a few courses over a year. I eventually became a project manager. When I became a project manager, my boss said, you need to get some certification. Go sign up for the PMI courses. And I joined the Project Management Institute. And there, as Sherry made some announcements today, someone came up and announced we have a Toastmasters club. And I remember my father being an extraordinary speaker when he was with Rotary. So because of that, I signed up immediately. And here, I discovered an awesome power. The power that seems most people seem to be oblivious to, the power of public speaking, what a speaker can do, what kind of connection can occur with this art. It's a skill, it's a science, it's no magic. I discovered this. I came, I came to evangelize eloquence. Eloquence is as essential as knowledge. Eloquence is as essential as judgment, as analysis. And a gift from my parents. They always read, I have been fortunate to be a lifelong reader. And everything that I'm going to speak about today, I first came across it either in a book or in an article. Texas Bay Area Society of Human Resources Management. I am honored to be here. This is a new group for me today. I am honored to be here. Sherry, thank you for that kind introduction. I stand before you grateful for this opportunity to speak about feedback. I stand before you mindful that we are strangers, that we don't really know each other. Nonetheless, we are entangled in a network, in a web of common interests, of common hungers, of common humanity. I stand before you certain that this knowledge on how we can give each other feedback will contribute to us being able to express those common interests, to be able to grow from our common hungers. I have a few tasks today. I'm going to try to be diplomatic, but it's more important that I get the job done. I have to persuade you. At the end of this task, you will be ready or you will think, or perhaps even hungry, to receive more feedback, to give more feedback, and to start creating a culture where feedback is normal. That's not all. We'll do it in three forms. I'll call them mild, medium, and hot. So at least this way I give you some leeway. You know, if you say, I can't do this, I say, I've got another one for you. <laughs> and I want to tell you that feedback is a fuel for growth. When I say feedback is a fuel for growth, what I mean, mild feedback. If I give you mild feedback, you will grow. If you seek expert feedback, that and only that is the road to mastery. Find someone who's become a master, I'll show you someone who's had expert feedback. And frequent feedback, not brutal feedback, not kind feedback, not a feedback, not that feedback. Frequent feedback is the formula for a culture where feedback feels normal. Here are a few key insights. Frequency of feedback is more important than the skill. Let's say 
I'm just terrible at giving feedback. And say, Jim, Jim is my friend. Jim is an expert at giving feedback. If Jim gives you expert feedback once a year, and I give you feedback once a day, terrible as it may be, you will grow faster thanks to my presence. <laughs> now, th this probably is the most important line in the whole presentation. <clears throat> Intention is more important than proficiency or eloquence. If I intend to give you feedback because I want you to improve, I want our company to improve, you will be significantly tolerant of a lack of skill, lack of perceived respect, if you know that this person wants me to improve. Intention is more important than skill. So look into yourself when you're giving feedback and the intention of the person you seek feedback from. It will correlate very highly with success. I don't really need to say this. Sought feedback is far more effective than enforced feedback. Enforced feedback is going through the motions. And do I have the guts to say this? Do I have the It's probably what's happening in your companies right now. Once a year, someone will come sit down. They'll have their, pew, 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 you go here, you go there. And everyone, ha, I'm done with it. Thank God. That's enforced feedback. We will see a few examples where it is sought and how it works. Your task then becomes first to seek feedback. For example, if I would like you to treat me with respect, I start by treating you with respect. If I want to be treated empathetically by you, I give you empathy first. <coughs> if I want you to listen to me, I should listen to you first. Same goes with feedback. Be better at receiving feedback than at giving it. And be really good at giving feedback too. Here's a suggestion for taking feedback. If you're going to receive feedback, look at yourself. Sorry, I'm an engineer. Consider yourself to be a receiver. Your task is to be like a sponge. This is not a time to process what the person is saying. This is not the time to dispute it. This is not the time to debate it. it. I'm only here to receive it. And this is not a time to respond. If you are skilled at receiving feedback, just receive it. And what I found has helped me is to just Fake the body language. Just to show your body language of intense curiosity. I do that all the time. Have anyone seen Amy Cuddy's TED talk, you know, power posing and stuff? So our body position actually prepares us to be a better receiver. So I try to imagine if I'm getting feedback that I've paid this person $100,000, now I better listen to every single thing he says. So just full concentration, listen really hard. And it's amazing how much more you absorb in return. Don't process it, there will be plenty of time to process it. Better still if you so that's the third method. Frequency all the time. Let's summarize what we've done. I want you to care. I really want you to care about this. That I will receive more feedback. I will give more feedback. And we must create a culture where feedback is normal. Now, you all gave me feedback. Did I evaporate? Did I vanish? <laughs> it's no big deal. Any one of you could be doing here. Any of you could be leading a meeting. Ask for feedback. Did you really understand what I said? We have three methods of giving it, so you have plenty of options. Mild, it is a fuel for growth. If you want mastery, seek expert feedback. If you want a culture of feedback, make it frequent. Frequent. We want it more and more and more and more feedback. Most important slide. If you forget everything else, please remember this. Frequency is more important than skill and intention. We are here to get better. I'm not here to love you. It's better if I do, but we are here in a company to get better at what we do. If we have lots of respect and affection and admiration, that's all good. But the intention, we are here to get better. Give it kindly, give it this way, give it that way. We are here to get better. So here's your challenge. This is your call to action. I don't really know whether you will. Will you? Will you Promise yourself that I will receive more feedback. I will give more feedback. I will give feedback more frequently. That I've said, this How to make feedback feel normal. This article just left me stunned. My research over the last 30 years, this is Joseph Grenny, has shown that we can largely predict the health of an organization by measuring the average time lag between identifying a problem and discussing a problem. You want to know how a company is doing? When do they identify a problem? When do they discuss it? That will tell you more than anything else, according to him, from 30 years of work. There is a company called The Other Side Movers. 
In this company, the lag time is as close to zero as I have ever seen. I've spent much of my career teaching people how to have crucial conversations, how to provide feedback, and I've realized lately that a lot of my work would have, could have been avoided if everyone, especially the leaders, had understood one simple fact. The primary reason that people struggle with giving feedback is not proficiency, but frequency. Our number one lesson. I learned this a surprising way. Now listen carefully. Over the past year, I watched a group of 50 convicts, hardcore drug addicts and the homeless people start three highly successful companies. One of which is the other side movers. So what he says is he goes as a coach to this organization where they're trying to reduce recidivism. We want to give you skills so that you can work and not come back to jail. It's a huge problem in America right now, actually almost everywhere in the world. So these people get together and they form a company called The Other Side Movers. 50 convicts and business of one million in a year and they started three companies and the other two are on track. Why? Because feedback is normal. That is what is different about this company. How did they do it? Feedback is normal. They have a core value, 200% accountability. I am 100% accountability for my work. If I'm a speaker and you're the audience member, I'm 100% responsible for being a speaker. You're 100% responsible for creating an atmosphere where everyone else works. The other 100%, I am accountable for your work. 100%. If you are not paying attention, I'm accountable for it. This is the company, this is the value that they chose to have. They have a concept called pull up, pass up, patch up. If I see Jim, hasn't done something, Jim, Jim, sorry, you were not supposed to speak to this lady like that, and it's the way you spoke to her. Pull up, pass up. I'm sorry, I am going to have to tell your supervisor. Feedback is instant patch up. Jim, we're on the same side. We got to make this work. This is every day, all the time. Pull up, pass up, patch up. This is the way in which they give instant feedback. I'm on a job with you, and you don't stick to the mission, I will pull you up, it's 100% my responsibility. No personal freedom business out here. The mission and the way we behave. Then they have something called the game. Everyone sits down together, form a circle, and hey Jim, how did you do this week? What did you see wrong? And you should read some of the discussion in the HBR. You know, one man is ogling at a woman and they all just jump on him. You are doing it, I don't do it, yes you are doing it. He said it becomes completely brutal. But when four or five people say you're behaving this way, they agree. And this is happening twice a week. And this game is his, what he said to answer your question. Just have them read this article and say, can we have a game once a month? And, and finally, customers, I'm, this is a lift from the article. Customers are stunned by the impeccable courtesy of this unusual group. So this is not Rashid Kapadia coming and giving you some theoretical nonsense out here. In fact, had I not read this article, I might not have converted this to a speech. But here it works. Feedback is normal. So this is the third most important slide. Top three. Are you ready to find out who can give you A-plus feedback? Are you ready to find a person or a department that needs your A-plus feedback? No, are you really ready to do that? Are you ready to get into that stretch zone? Are you ready to go into use stress? Are you ready to put boredom aside and stretch yourself till you're close to anxiety? Second most important slide, candor, candor, candor. Yes, you can be blunt, you can be this, you can be that. If it is honest and your intentions are, we must improve as a group, it will be well received. Discussions, if they are brutally honest, well, you've got plenty of company. A lot of the best AARs have worked here. Most important slide, frequency is more important. You must care about giving feedback. Make me care. Make the person you're listening to care about why we are giving feedback. We want to be better. We want this meeting to be better. We want our department meetings to be better. We want our products to be better. Make me care. Intention, intention. We want to build the best companies. We want to be the best groups. Intention to give feedback is most important. Thank you.